In this tutorial, I will again explain the difference between DBI and DBD, what an antenna E-plane and H-plane is, what the effect is of ground to an antenna, what the difference is between main, back and side lobes, what antenna gain is, what negative antenna gain is, what the relationship is between ERP, antenna gain and transmission power, how to calculate loss using example, what unity gain is, what an antenna beam width is, what a takeoff angle is, and what a front to back ratio is. An isotropic antenna is a hypothetic, not physically realizable point source antenna that radiates its power uniformly in all directions. This is a radiation pattern of an isotropic antenna. An isotropic antenna is considered a lossless antenna, which means it has an antenna efficiency of 0 dB or 100%. Antenna efficiency is explained in tutorial 32. A special tuned half wave dipole antenna is used as a reference antenna for test purposes. A reference half wave dipole antenna has an isotropic gain of 2.15 dBi. DBI refers to the antenna gain with respect to an isotropic antenna. If antenna A has a gain of 3 dBi, it means antenna A has twice the power relative to an isotropic antenna in the peak direction. DBD refers to an antenna gain with respect to a reference half-wave dipole antenna. If antenna B has a gain of 3 dBd, it means antenna B has twice the power relative to a reference half-wave dipole antenna in the peak direction. If an antenna manufacturer specifies its antenna gain, it must use the reference I in DBI or D in DBD. Otherwise, you do not know the antenna's actual gain. Let's say a bear is two times stronger. This does not mean anything. Note, two times is the same as 3 dB. See tutorial 5. Now let's say animal X is two times stronger than an ant. I'm using the subscript ant over here, which means 3 dB stronger compared to an ant. Animal Y is two times stronger than an elephant. I'm using the subscript elephant over here, which means 3 dB stronger compared to an elephant. So the reference ant and elephant are important to determine animal X and Y actual strength. The same applies to antenna gains. The reference I in isotropic or D in dipole is needed. The relationship between DBD and DBI is expressed by this equation. Here are some examples. Antenna A has a gain of 0 dBi. Enter 0 over here and you will get minus 2.15 dBd. Antenna B has a gain of 2.15 dBi. Enter this value over here and you will get 0 dBd. Antenna C has a gain of 0 dBd. Enter 0 over here and you will get 2.15 dBi. And antenna D has a gain of 3 dBd. Enter 3 over here, and you will get 5.15 dBi. For a vertical polarized antenna, as you can see over here, the E plane coincides with the vertical plane. The E and H plane are 90 degrees apart. By the way, H refers to the magnetic fields. For a horizontal polarized antenna, as you can see over here, the E plane coincides with the horizontal plane. The E and H plane are 90 degrees apart, as you can see over here. In the E plane, the radiation pattern of a half wave dipole antenna looks like the number 8, as you can see over here, with the maxima perpendicular on the dipole axis. Here are the maxima. The radiation pattern is circular in the H-plane for a half-wave dipole antenna, as you can see here. Here are radiation patterns of a half-wave dipole antenna, vertical polarized in free space. The radiation pattern in horizontal plane, the radiation pattern in vertical plane, and the radiation pattern in 3D. Please note, free space means there is no ground effect. This particular half-wave dipole antenna 
has a maximum gain of 2.13 dBi. And here are the radiation patterns of a half-wave dipole antenna, vertical polarized, 1 meter above perfect ground. Perfect ground means perfect conductivity. The ground, which is this line, reflects the signal upwards. The maximum gain is now 5.34 dBi. The influence of the ground is significant due to reflection. Again, here are the radiation patterns of a half-wave dipole antenna, vertical polarized. Here you can see two radiation patterns. One radiation pattern created when the antenna is in free space, and the other radiation pattern when the antenna is one meter above perfect ground. As you can see, the maximum gain is increased from 2.13 dBi to 5.34 dBi due to the ground effect. Please be aware, an antenna normally does not operate in free space, unless it's actually in deep space. An antenna has always some ground effect. How much this effect is depends on the antenna distance to the ground and the ground conductivity. Use an antenna modeling software such as the 4NEC2, see tutorial 38, to investigate the ground effect. In radiation patterns, you can see such shapes. They are called lobes. The main lobe is the lobe containing the highest power. Opposite of the main lobe is the back lobe. This is the back lobe. The other lobes are called side lobes. These are side lobes. The antenna gain, often referred by the letter G, is defined as the maximum radiated power produced by the antenna main lobe compared to a reference isotropic antenna or reference dipole antenna supplied with the same input power. Question. An antenna has a gain of 2.15 dBi. What does this mean? So the answer is 2.15 dBi is compared to a reference isotropic antenna. To calculate the gain, you can use this equation. This equation is explained in tutorial 5. When you rearrange this equation, you will get this equation. Enter 2.15 dBi, you will get this. And the gain is 1.64. So P antenna is 1.64 times P isotropic. This means the antenna has a maximum power gain of 1.64 over a reference isotropic antenna. Question, an antenna has a gain of 3 dBd. What does this mean? So here's the answer. 3 dBd is compared to a reference dipole antenna. Again, you can use this equation to calculate the gain. And this is the equation rearranged. Enter 3 dBd over here. And if you calculate this, you get the value 2. So P antenna is 2 times P dipole. This means the antenna has a maximum power gain of 2 over a reference dipole antenna. Let's say you have two half-wave dipole antennas, X and Y, both operating in free space and both are using the same input power. Antenna X has a gain of 0 dBd and antenna Y has a gain of 6 dBd. Note, antenna Y does not exist. I made it up for educational purpose. Question, in general, what will the radiation patterns for both antennas look like in free space? Here is the answer. This is the radiation pattern for an antenna with a gain of 0 dBd. This is a radiation pattern of an antenna with a gain of 3 dBd. And this is a radiation pattern of an antenna with a gain of 6 dBd. As you can see, the radiation pattern will be flatter when the gain is increased. Let's say you have two half-wave dipole antennas, X and Y. Both are vertical polarized and both are using the same input power. Antenna X has a gain of 0 dBd and antenna Y has a gain of 6 dBd. Note, antenna Y does not exist. I made it up for educational purpose. Question. The gateway is located at the fifth floor of a building and the end node is located nearby the building at the ground. Which antenna should I use for the end node? As you can see, the gateway is located at the fifth floor and nearby at the ground is an end node. 
you can choose between a half-wave dipole antenna X with a gain of 0 dBd or a half-wave dipole antenna Y with a gain of 6 dBd. Which one is better? The answer is choose the half-wave dipole antenna X with a gain of 0 dBd. This is the radiation pattern of a half-wave dipole antenna with 0 dBd gain. And this is the radiation pattern of a half-wave dipole antenna with a 6 dBd gain. This radiation pattern is much flatter than this radiation pattern. Draw a line from end node to gateway. You see at this direction, at this point, antenna X has a higher gain than antenna Y. Please, I know this is a ridiculous drawing, but with this silly example, I want to take my point across that a higher gain antenna is not always preferable. By the way, in this example, I am completely ignoring the ground effect. An antenna can have a negative gain. For example, an antenna has a gain of minus 3 dBd or minus 1.15 dBi. Minus 3 dBd is compared to a reference dipole antenna. What does minus 3 dBd mean? So to calculate the gain, you can use this equation. Rearrange this equation, you will get this equation. Fill in minus 3 and you will get this. And if you calculate this, you will get half. So P antenna is half times P dipole. This means the antenna has a maximum power gain of half over a reference dipole antenna. This is a radiation pattern of an imaginary antenna. This circle represents 0 dBd. This circle represents minus 3 dBd. This circle represents minus 6 dBd, etc. As you can see, this antenna has a maximum gain of minus 3 dBd. This circle represents 0 dBd, which means everything outwards of this circle is a positive gain. Everything inside this circle represents a negative gain. A negative gain means that the antenna radiates less than the reference antenna, and a positive number means that the antenna radiates more than the reference antenna. The reference antenna can be an isotropic or a dipole antenna. I have a collinear antenna and its antenna gain is 6.18 dBi. This is the vertical and horizontal radiation pattern of this antenna. And here you can see the radiation pattern in 3D. The specified antenna gain is 6.18 dBi. But this maximum antenna gain does not apply in all directions, only at elevation angle 25 degrees, as you can see here. Elevation angle at 25 degrees. At elevation angle 85 degrees, that's here, 85 degrees, the antenna gain is around 4 dBi. When a manufacturer specifies an antenna gain of a certain value, it doesn't mean this antenna gain applies in all directions. An antenna manufacturer should provide the horizontal and vertical radiation patterns of its antennas. Otherwise, buyers will have no idea how these antennas radiate. The relationship between EIRP and ERP is expressed by this equation. For more information, see tutorial 9. Or you can use this equation. This equation uses milliwatts instead of dBm. The factor 1.64 was explained earlier. Using this equation, this 2.15 is from this. When you calculate this equation, you will get 1.64. As explained in tutorial 11, when using the AU 863 to 870 ISM band, the maximum ERP is 25 milliwatt for uplink and downlink for slot 1, and the maximum ERP is 500 milliwatt for downlink for slot 2. These two values are these two values. ERP 25 milliwatts equals 14 dBm, and ERP 500 milliwatts equals 27 dBm. The previous mentioned values are now converted to AERP using this equation, as you can see over here. ARP 25 milliwatts equals AERP 41 milliwatts, 
and ARP 500 milliwatts equals AERP 820 milliwatts. So let's convert these values into dBm. These two values are these two values. AERP 41 milliwatt equals 16 dBm and AERP 820 milliwatts equals 29 dBm. When operating in the AU863 to 870 ISM band, there is no specific limit set with regard to the antenna gain, but it is indirectly limited. See this equation. If this is limited, then the antenna gain is indirectly limited. This is an overview which only applies for the AU863 to 870 ISM band. Here are the maximum uplink values. And here are the maximum downlink values for slot 1 and slot 2. Let's assume you are using the AU863 to 870 ISM band and you are attaching different antennas with different gains to the same end node. And the total loss between end node and antenna, meaning cable plus connectors, is 0.5 dB. Here you see the end node and antenna. The end node and antenna are connected by a cable. The total loss of connectors plus cable is 0.5 dB. These are the different antennas. These gains are expressed by dBd, and these are the same gains but now expressed by dBi. Question. Calculate the maximum allowed end node transmission power for each antenna. Reminder, when using AU863 to 870 ISM band, the maximum end node transmission power is ERP is 25 milliwatts, which is approximately 14 dBm, or AERP is 41 milliwatts, which is approximately 16 dBm. This is answer A. In this example, I'm using the ERP value. When using ERP, the antenna gain must be converted into dBd. For AU863 to 870 ISM band, the maximum ERP is 25 milliwatts, which is approximately 14 dBm. You can use this equation. This is the same equation but rearranged. Please note dBd is dBi minus 2.15. When using ERP, the antenna gain must be expressed in dBd. The first step is to convert the antenna gains to dBd. These antenna gains are not converted, and these antenna gains in dBi's are converted into dBd. Now we can calculate the transmission power, and these are the maximum transmission power for antenna A, B, and C. And here are the maximum transmission powers for antenna D, E, and F. And here is answer B. In this example, I'm using the AERP value. When using AERP, the antenna gain must be converted into dBi. When using AU863 to 870 ISM band, the maximum AERP is 41 milliwatts, which is approximately 16 dBm. You can use this equation. This is the same equation but rearranged. Please note dBi is dBd plus 2.15. When using AERP, the antenna gain must be converted into dBi. Again, convert the antenna gains. In this example, these antenna gains must be converted into dBi. These values does not need to be converted. And these are the maximum transmission power for antenna A, B, and C. And these are the maximum transmission power for antenna D, E, and F. Cables and connectors have a certain loss. Normally, these losses can be found in the manufacturer's specifications. I have bought many connectors and cables from Chinese web shops. Unfortunately, these web shops do not provide loss figures, and I do not have the equipment to actually measure these losses. As an alternative, I have searched the web for comparable connectors and used their loss figures. Or better yet, buy from reputable manufacturers. In the following slides, you will see several connectors with their losses. I'm using these loss figures as rough estimates. Please do your own research. Use these estimates at your own risk. By the way, insertion loss is the loss of signal power 
resulting from the insertion of a device in a transmission line and is usually expressed in decibels. This is an RF coaxial cable RG316. The length is 20 cm with a type N mill plug right angle and this is the SMA mill connector. These are my estimated loss values. This is a type N female chassis mount 4 hole connector and this is my estimated loss value of this connector. This is the SMA edge mount connector with this loss value and here are two SMA to SMA connectors with their estimated loss values. This is my Yagi Uda antenna. This Yagi Uda antenna will be explained in tutorial 48. The end node is connected to the Yagi Uda antenna by a coax cable. The total loss is calculated as follows. This is a type N female chassis mount which has a loss of 0.2 dB. The type N plug plus coax plus SMA with a total loss of 0.41 dB. The SMA to SMA connector, total loss is 0.1 dB. And the SMA edge connector connected to the end node, which has a loss of 0.14 dB. So the total loss is all these values added together equals 0.85 dB. So the total loss is 0.85 dB. The antenna gain is expressed in dBi or dBd. For example, antenna XYZ has a gain of 0 dBd or 2.15 dBi. Sometimes antenna manufacturers are using the term unity gain. Antenna XYZ has unity gain with respect to an isotropic radiator. Unity gain is the power radiated by the antenna with the equivalent of 1 times whatever the input power is. In other words, radiated power equals the input power. Unity gain means a power gain of 1. The antenna manufacturer must specify which reference antenna is used, isotropic or dipole. Example A. Antenna ABC has unity gain with respect to a dipole. This is the equation to calculate the gain. The radiated power equals the input power. This equals to 1. As you can see over here, if you calculate this, you will get 0 dBd equals 2.15 dBi. In this example, unity gain is 0 dBd equals 2.15 dBi. Example B. Antenna XYZ has unity gain with respect to an isotropic radiator. Again, we use the same equation. The radiated power equals the input power, which means this equals to 1, as you can see over here. This equation is now 0 dBi. This was dBd and this is now dBi because we are using an isotropic radiator. 0 dBi equals minus 2.15 dBd. So in this example, the unity gain is 0 dBi equals minus 2.15 DVD. The antenna beam width, also known as half power beam width, is the angle between the half power points of the main lobe. Let's look at this main lobe. This circle represents 0 dB, and this circle represents minus 3 dB. If we follow this circle, it intersects the main lobe at this point and it intersects the main lobe at this point. So if you draw a line from the center to this point, and a line from the center to this point, you will get an angle, and this angle is the antenna beam width. The antenna beam width is the area where most of the power is radiated. The antenna beam width for a reference half-wave dipole antenna is approximately 78 degrees. An antenna with a narrow beam width tends to have a higher gain, and an antenna with a wider beam width tends to have a lower gain. A narrow beam width with a higher gain, a wider beam width with a lower gain. The takeoff angle, this angle, measured from the horizon, 
is the angle where the gain of the elevation plot peaks. In this example, the takeoff angle is 25 degrees. The objective of a directional antenna is to transmit most of its radiated power in the forward direction and minimize its radiated power in the rearward direction. The front to back ratio is expressed in dB, meaning dBi or dBd, and is the forward gain minus the rearward gain, as you can see over here. Here's an example, the forward gain is 9 dBi and the rearward gain is minus 4 dBi. So the front to back ratio is 13 dBi. The higher the front to back ratio, the more directionally efficient the antenna is. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.